trying to find the best you can, but it's not a successful marriage. is isn't about finding the right person so much as it is about doing the right things. That's why the Bible never, ever, 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 anywhere talks about trying to find your soulmate, trying to find the one special person. See, because the reason we, that's so appealing to us is because we think if we find the right person, it'll just be easy. Then it's not on us. It's about finding that right person. It's not because I'm a self-centered, narcissistic slob. It's just because I didn't find my soulmate. And about the only other one you can find is in the Old Testament where God told Hosea the prophet to go marry a prostitute. And, and even then, he didn't say which prostitute to marry. He said, just go pick one. All right. And if you're thinking about marrying a prostitute, you really should have God tell you that first. <laughs> Number two, you want to look at how they react to things in life. It's easy to act. It's easy to hide who you are by the way you act. We all do that. You know, people, you get around certain types of people, you start acting like those kinds of kids or, or, you know, whatever the situation is. And people can kind of fake their way through a lot of situations. But one thing that's really hard to hide is how you react to stuff. When people start reacting, now you really see what they're like. You know, what happens when he gets really ticked off? What does he do? How does she handle it when something really starts irritating her? How does she respond to that? That's what you want to look at because that's the kind of character that starts getting revealed because that's hard to fake. You can fake the acting all day long, but when somebody ticks you off, you see the real person come out, okay? Or someone gets real critical. How do they, how do they react to that person? What's well, stupid? You know, that's what you want to look at. Because in their reactions, now you're getting a real picture of what this person is like. This is the person you will be living with. This is the person who you will be marrying. Not so much the actor as the reactor. And if you start seeing reactions that are bad news and start spelling it, man, just move on. You will not die. You will be fine. Better to make a right decision based on the reactions of the person that you're learning about than to get caught up in their actions and make a mistake and think you'll straighten it out later. Very, very hard to straighten it out later. All the time, come up to me and say, you know, Pastor Mark, you know, I've been dating this guy and I really love him and, and uh, you know, but everybody tells me I shouldn't have anything to do with him. My pastor says I shouldn't have anything to do with him. My mom says I shouldn't have anything to do with him. My brother and sister says he's a complete loser. But, you know, what do you think I should do? And I always say, well, listen to your family. And they'll always go, huh? but I love him. But what about my feelings? But I feel it. I have to be honest with my heart. No, you don't. Don't try to be honest with your feelings. They're the most dishonest part of you. Feelings change all the time. And honestly, in America, in the West culture actually, but particularly in America, only in the most important decision of our lives concerning a relationship, like marriage, only in that area do we let feelings be the dictator. I mean, who would let feelings dictate any other part of their life? Can you imagine people deciding Monday morning whether or not to go to school based on their feelings? Who'd go? Unless you really like school. Some people do. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine people going to work based on how they feel? Calling up their boss and saying, boss, I'd really love to come to work today, but I just have to be honest with my feelings. I'm just not feeling it today. Well, he'd fire your butt. And he should. No other area of life would anybody run their feelings as the motivator for their decision, except for some insane reason when it comes to marriage and love. Then feelings become, you follow your feelings, you are headed if you're not using your head. Feelings are part of it, I get it. But you let the feelings be the final determinant, you're headed for potential trouble. Listen, people, look around you. We are in a world where over half of the marriages end in divorce. All right, then finally, I get this one. This is probably the biggie of all the things you do during your dating experience. Don't get physical because this is the biggest disaster. Sex is a powerful, powerful thing. And it doesn't have to be flat out intercourse. It can be any version of sex that you want to go down. Everything from heavy petting and making out to oral sex to God knows what else people are doing today. Don't go. The minute you go down there, you are really looking for trouble because outside of marriage, sex makes you stupid. It just makes you stupid. It makes you dumb as a brick. Okay. Now it's supposed to in marriage. 
Sex is the one thing that in marriage, it kind of just takes the edge off of life and, and holds two people together for a lifetime. At least it's supposed to. But you, when you do it outside of that rush of that and the endorphins and the excitement, <laughs> it just take, you might as well take your brain out, put it in a jar, and set it off somewhere. If you doubt me, look at people around you. Ask some of the people older than you who, who've been dating and uh, their, their relationships fall apart. And they'll say stuff like, I don't know why I was with that person so long. He was an idiot. He was mean to me. He was abusive. Uh, girls all the time talk about guys who beat them up, who curse at them, who humiliate them. Guys who talk about women that they were dating and maybe living with for a while or maybe got married to them and they were just rah, 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 and just always being mean and nasty and critical to them. And I always ask them, because sometimes I'll, a lot of the emails I'll get are people who've been married for like less than a year and they're in hell. I mean, they're in absolute hell. Their lives are miserable. And I think, how do you get from wedding day to hell in like six months? I mean, how do you do that? Because some of these guys have been dating for four, five, six years. And I always ask them, didn't you see that when you were dating? You, you, you mean to tell me that all of a sudden he's this way in a straight, and you never saw that before? And they'll say, no, I never saw it. And money in the bank, man. I ask them all the time, let me ask you a question. Were you having sex before you got married? Every time, without exception, when you have that scenario, they'll say, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I know we probably shouldn't. Da, 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 da. Look, this isn't even a moral argument that I'm laying out. There's all kinds of moral arguments against this. This is just an intelligence argument. The minute you go down that path, it makes you dumb. You don't see that people are in bad relationships all the time. Some of you probably even see it with, uh, you know, maybe people closer to your age who are in really bad relationships. Anybody can see it's a bad relationship. They're being abused, they're being taken care of, they're being, uh, or not being taken care of, they're being disrespected, all this other, but they won't leave the relationship. They stay with the person. Why? Money says they're having sex with them. The minute you get really physically involved with someone, it's like something just gets in your head and you can't think clearly. Now, sex is a big deal, particularly for most guys. I mean, that's really, you know, guys are just, we're just wired that way. Uh, particularly by the time we hit age 18, we're just, ah, you know, all this <laughs> incredible buzz and energy because of all the testosterone flowing through our blood. But uh, uh, what's really, so many people don't understand, guys don't understand, women don't understand, is that men tend to imprint on their first sexual experiences. If a guy's first sexual experience is, you know, in the context of lust or the backseat of the car, just, <laughs> you know, that whole deal, you know, parents aren't home, ooh, let's go do it, and, you know, what the parents, if that's your first sexual experience, you tend to imprint on that, and it tends to identify you sexually for the rest of your life, to a large degree. It's absolutely frightening when you think about it. Again, no one talks about this. You should hear it when I talk to people in their 30s and 40s and 50s with tears in their eyes. They say to me, I wish to God someone would have told us this when we were younger. But what happens is you tend to imprint on that thing and then that becomes your mark for life. And oftentimes guys keep going back to trying to relive that first experience because guys tend to imprint on their first sexual experiences and it tends to define them. If a guy's first sexual experience is in the, in the idea of messing around and fooling around and lust and, you know, oral sex or whatever different things, he tends to imprint on that. And he tends to imprint more on the sex than the girl. That's why for a lot of guys, the girl becomes virtually interchangeable. I know you girls are like mortified by that. You know, what's the matter with guys? Why, you know, how can they go from one girl to the other? Because it's not about the girl. It's just about the experience. And even guys who eventually get their heads straightened out and grow up and then get married and stuff later in life, they still struggle with those same feelings. And some of them will struggle with them for the rest of their lives. Even great Christian guys in churches and stuff like that, they're still struggling with those internal feelings because they want to keep going back to that place. That's why a lot of guys can't stay faithful in their marriages. And what's the matter with you know, these people? Why would, they, why would they cheat on mom? Why would they do it? Because it's for some of them, it doesn't happen for all of them. But overall, it's a huge percentage. They get so buzzed on that first experience, they are constantly trying to relive that experience. If a guy waits until his wedding day to truly experience sex for the first time, he imprints on the girl. It's why those people who wait have the lowest 
divorce rates in the world. Now I talked about those women who just have one partner, they have a 20% divorce rate. If these people really did it right on their wedding day, it drops to 5%. And, this is, and you don't even have to be a Christian. This is of any culture in the world. Of those who wait, they have a 5% divorce rate. They're the same people, same ideas, same thing. That is the power of a sexual connection. Because now he imprints on the girl. And now that girl becomes his focus. And it's not about any other girl. It's just about that girl that he experiences this with. And he commits to her. And it holds them together for the rest of their life.